Susan Spungen, and I'm here today coming to you from my home kitchen in East Hampton, New York, to show you how to make the cheesy baked pasta with radicchio and red onions that's in my new book, Open Kitchen. I'm gonna get my pasta water going so that I don't have to wait for that big pot to come to a boil. And I've got two pretty big red onions here. I like to cut off the tip and the root because then the skin just comes off more easily. So I look for red onions that really do have a lot of color. I really love playing up the, uh, the pink tones in all of the ingredients in this pasta. So just throwing all my scraps into my compost. I have this really great composter here. So here's how you do the rotary cut. And this is the cut that I like to use a lot when I'm sauteing because the onions, instead of getting really, really skinny when they cook down, they just keep a little bit of shape. So you're really cutting them into wedges, about quarter inch at the back. And when I say at the back, I mean here. Very hard sometimes when you're a recipe writer to explain exactly what you mean. And you also have to remember onions it might seem like a lot. They're gonna really disappear as I cook them, so. Put them all in a pan, like in a big 12 inch pan. You wanna kinda of use the biggest pan you have for something like this, so. Get about a t half a teaspoon of salt on the onions, which will help them release their liquid and break down a little bit. So almost right away, they start taking on some color and that's what you want. It's gonna take about 10 to 12 minutes for the onions to cook all the way. <laughs> Whoops, I dropped one. <laughs> And about halfway through, I'm gonna add the garlic. So I'm gonna chop that now. Especially if you're cooking on a high heat, you don't necessarily wanna add the garlic right in the beginning because it might burn long before the onions are cooked. So I'm trying to smash these garlic cloves. I'm just putting them to loosen the skins, but not hard enough to, um, to actually smash the cloves. Just having sort of the right touch will just loosen the skins, especially when they're really kind of hard like these. And these are really fat cloves, so I'm just gonna turn it on its side so that my pieces are a little smaller. Once the onions start getting, if they start getting too brown, that's when you wanna turn the heat down. I know you guys like that. While my onions are cooking, I'm gonna shred the radicchio. I'm just gonna cut the core out of the radicchio. You could substitute another sort of bitter green if you wanted to, but I really, radicchio is usually pretty easy to find these days. It's not pretty better. This recipe is really actually pretty low prep, easy prep, because this is, takes two seconds to do. All right, I'm gonna add the garlic now to the onions because they're getting closer. Let this cook a couple more minutes, about three more minutes till the onions just kind of loses its rawness, starts to toast a little bit. I'm going to um, add a little something that was not in my original recipe, but um, the Food and Wine Test Kitchen decided that it would be better with this tablespoon of red vinegar. And I think it's a great idea, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Just, you know, to balance all of the cheesy creaminess of the dish. You gotta remember this is gonna cook again in the oven. So really all we're trying to do is cook some of the volume out of the radicchio. And salt, you know, I try to give salt amounts in my recipes, but you have to kind of use your instincts on that. Not quite there yet. As soon as it loses its raw look is what we're looking for here. So for this recipe, um, there's a couple different pasta shapes that are kind of similar. Uh, this is this one's called Casarecchio, right? If it's two C's, it's Casarecchio. And sometimes you see it Casarecci, but sometimes uh, Strozza Preti, which means priest stranglers, is quite similar to this. Gemelli is another one. They're all pretty similar, but if you didn't have that, you could also use um, rigatoni, which this would be a really good option. All right, I get out the big guns for the pasta water because we always want a lot of salt in the pasta water. And, you know, your whole pasta dish can taste a little bit bland. 
if you don't have enough salt in your pasta water. So um, you always want to probably put in a little bit more than you would ever think. Because most of it is going to get, um, most of it's going to just go down the drain and the pasta itself will just taste seasoned when you make sure you have enough in there. You always want to stir your pasta right away and a minute or so later so it doesn't stick. So this is looking really wilty, which is what we want. I think we're actually pretty good. The wonderful thing about goat cheese in a pasta is that it sort of melts into almost like a cream, a creamy texture. It doesn't, it's not gonna stay uh, crumbly like this. I do admit this recipe is a little bit decadent. Um, it has a cup and a half of cream in it. <laughs> But I think everybody knows this is like a treat, right? We have this kind of a pasta. Oh yeah. The goat cheese will melt. It's already melting. You only need to leave the cream in long enough to kind of bring everything to a simmer. But we don't want to cook off too much of the cream because we want to retain um, enough, a, a lot of the liquid for the final dish. And then we're just gonna turn off the heat and let this um, just rest while we uh, get ready for the next step. You want the pasta to be very al dente, a little undercooked, because it's gonna bake again in the oven. Actually, it's perfect. Always a good idea to save some pasta water. And I'm gonna go right into this pan here. And I'm going to add the prosciutto, separating it so it's not all clumped up. About two thirds of the fontina. I'm gonna save some for the top. I'm gonna to also add this one cup of pasta water. And why do we save pasta water? Well, because it has starch in it and that will help just sort of give some body to the sauce. And what we don't want is for this dish to be too dry. So, mm. see all that nice liquid? That's a good amount of liquid that we want. All right, I'm gonna add some black pepper. I'm not even sure if the recipe has it. It should. <laughs> Look at that slight pink color the cream has taken on from the onions and the radicchio. I've already put the butter in the dish to soften up while I was cooking, because that's it's kind of hard if you remember at the last second to butter your dish. Come back up on me, please. <laughs> Try not to use a Pyrex. Like, really invest in a nice oven-to-table dish, because it's quite soupy, so I'm just gonna let it slide in. Get everything in there. Oh my God, that looks so good. There we go. Whoops, did I splash you? Okay, so now I'm just gonna take that little bit of fontina that we set on the side and distribute that quite evenly over the top. So that'll just melt into like little puddles. And then the parm goes on top and then it's gonna go into the oven. So that's gonna bake for about 30 to 35 minutes. Um, unless you're coming from the fridge, in which case it, you want to add about 10 to 15 minutes because it's going to take that long just to warm up the dish. So this looks just about perfect after 30 minutes. It's all crunchy and golden on the top and bubbling on the edges. I'm going to take it out. This smells so good and I'm going to serve it right now with this beautiful Hungarian rosé. Kind of unusual, but really delicious. I'm gonna use my very favorite serving spoon that I use all the time that I got in a flea market in Amsterdam. Now, you might wanna get in tight here because it's gonna be really cheesy and yummy. Oh my God, who would not wanna have this? Super comforting and yummy and really quite easy to put together. Oh wow, look at this crazy cheese pulls. <laughs> screw top, I love a screw top. And since this is like pretty casual dinner, I'm just gonna serve it in tumblers. I think I better taste this just to make sure it's good. I'm gonna taste my very favorite part. Mmm. I love the crunchy bits on top. 
It makes this whole dish, it's the whole purpose for making this dish. I think you're really gonna love this pasta dish. It's decadent, it's a little bit naughty, it's absolutely delicious, and everybody's gonna love it.